there's a fair few of novels just sort of there. Hello, welcome back to another video um, of me rambling about literature and novels. Today I'm actually giving you a book haul because I have a significantly large amount of literature piling up around my room that I have amassed over the past two months. So I thought I would show you said novels and actually there's a play which is not something I would buy. I'm pretty sure I said in the last video that I wouldn't buy a play but I did because of my literature A-level and the wider reading that I have to do for that. I thought I'd keep this introduction quite short so you guys can actually look at the books instead of me. I think I showed you the book stack and it sort of just kind of fell over on my bed into this very large heap, which is great. So I'm just going to start randomly with these books. They're not in any particular order. It's just all of the books that I've decided to buy over the past two months. All of these, except for American Psycho, are secondhand um, from charity shops. I am a very big supporter of secondhand literature. I think it's so nice when it has a history and a story behind it and battered books are brilliant. Let's start off with the closest book to me which is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I began reading this and it is very, very um, tedious a bit. Um, Leo Tolstoy is a very good writer, however this is around 823 pages long. I just found that he could have made it so much shorter if you wanted to. Um, but this is Leo Tolstoy we're talking about, he's a critically acclaimed author, so perhaps it's just me being very lazy and preferring shorter books. I just found this a very long book, to the point where I went on Wikipedia and I searched up the plot so I knew the ending. Um, I did actually read the ending in the end, I tapped it and everything, but it's a very, 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 very long read and it's not for everybody. Um, do I regret buying it? No, because I feel like I had to read it um, to experience such dull emotions. Um, but do I recommend this? No. Unless you want to watch the film and you're one of those people that's like, I have to read the book first, which is one of the reasons why I bought this, because I wanted to watch the film with Keira Knightley in. Um, read the book if you want to do that, but if you just want to read a Leo Tolstoy book, read War and Peace, don't read Anna Karenina. Also the representation of women in this is really, really poor, um, but this is a different time period. Uh, but yeah, so next is Jekyll and Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, and as it's like nearly Halloween, it's half term now, um, I feel like this is sort of like a spooky read. This is also really good because it's very short, and I got this from a charity shop after the recommendation of a friend on Instagram. It's a very good read, and it's short, and I just think it's... Brilliant. This one is also like a like a collection of very short like terror stories. Also my shoulder just clicked. Um, so there's a range in here. So if you want some sort of like spooky short reads for this half term or Halloween or that kind of thing, I recommend getting the Penguin Classics version. Yeah, this is just the Penguin Classics, it's not the modern classics version. Um, I highly recommend. Next is Evelyn Woe, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, um, Bio Bodies which um, I've heard a very mixed sort of emotion kind of reviews from these because some people love it and some people hate it. I feel like it is the Marmite of literature. <laughs> um, yeah, so I picked it up in a charity shop uh, mostly because of the blurb. I thought it was really cool. It sounded very fascinating and engaging. And then a few of my friends said they loved it and a few of them said they hated it. And really in that situation, I'd read it anyway out of just pure curiosity. Um, but yeah, I got this from a cherry shop and I don't know what else to say about it. I just thought it was really fascinating. And at that point I hadn't had a lot of classics by females. So I really wanted to like begin to amass a collection of female writer books. So I thought this was a great addition to my collection, especially if it created such a divide within its readers. Next is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. We share our name, which is really cool. Um, my friend Emma recommended me this novel. I really wanted to watch the screen adaptation of Rebecca as well, so I thought I'd read it first because of the recommendation from my friend and the urge to watch it on Netflix. Um, I don't know if it's still on Netflix or not, but yes. And I remember getting so happy when I found this in the charity shop because 
It's such a steal when you find such good novels for such a small price. This is the other sort of like spooky read that I got, and I got this two days ago. This is Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's one of the most popular pieces of literature ever, and I'm very, very, very excited to read this. I also have Frankenstein downstairs, my mum owns it, and I'm going to read that. I'll probably read both of them this weekend, um, just for the purpose of Halloween and that sort of like spooky season thing. Um, I'm very excited and it's a sort of battered copy as well which I absolutely love and it's a semi floppy book so that's good as well. Next is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and I actually already have a version of this. I have the cover with like the film, the first film on, um, but this is a new, well, newer version which is the Oxford World Classics edition and I think the cover is so pretty, like that's just lovely. Um, this is probably one of my favourite classics of all time, always will be, because it's just the blueprint enemies to lovers, which is my favourite romance trope. Uh, yeah, I just love Elizabeth Bennet. I think she is so witty and intelligent and brilliant, and I aspire to be her in so many ways. I just had to get that even though I owned a version, so now I have my own personal version littered with annotations. <laughs> so this is the only play I got, which is Tennessee Williams's Cat on a Hot Tin Roof at a River and other plays and the reason I got this is because I am doing plays for my English literature course for A level so I had to kind of do some wider reading and I thought why not get this because my mum read it and she said it was good so here it is. I'm not the biggest fan of plays I'm not gonna lie obviously I'm doing this for wider reading I try to avoid them where I can mostly because I did drama at GCSE last year and I just really despise scripts. So I got Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and I don't own a Virginia Woolf novel, I know, that's really bad, she's one of like the most famous female writers and I don't have one, although I do. I got this I think like a month back and I just had to get it, also Mrs Dalloway is very, very popular, one of her most popular novels, so I just thought win-win situation and I think I got this for like 50p which is an even better steal, um, I'm very excited. And then we have The Tailor of Panama. I actually think this is on the Cambridge's reading list as well, or it was a few years ago, so this is gonna help me when I get to university and start talking about wider reading, um, so I'm very excited. I actually didn't really care about the author, like the Cambridge stuff came after, I just thought the blurb was really cool and fascinating and engaging. And again, I got this for 50p. Honestly, the charity shops in my area do have a very, very good collection of books. I cannot lie. Um, yeah, very cool cover as well, I thought it was very fascinating. I haven't actually read any of those novels except for Pride and Prejudice, but this is a novel I just finished like a few days ago, which is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Um, Margaret Atwood is one of my favourite writers of all time. She is an incredible poet, and I actually began reading her poetry before I read any of her works, and honestly it's one of the best pieces of literature I've ever read, and it's one of my favourite novels of all time now. Um, like I said, her poetry is amazing, she has some incredible pieces of free verse. Um, so yeah, okay so next is Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, and I haven't actually read this yet, um, but I've been this for two months, this was like the first sort of autumnal purchase I guess. Can you say that September's in autumn? I see it as a sort of autumnal season, we're gonna say it is. Um, but I actually found like a 1920s version of Jane Eyre in hardback a few days ago um, which is going to be one of my Christmas presents so until then we're sticking with the paperback edition yeah this was, like I said, these are all spontaneous finds but I'm really really excited about this because they say about like strong female characters and there's something about strong female characters um, who are slightly eccentric that really pull me in I guess um, so yeah, that's why I got this the next novel is the only novel I have from the past two months that's actually part of my English literature course. I do have Tess the D'Urbervilles and I didn't get that in the past two months so it doesn't really count but um, this is Ian McEwan's Atonement and I really want to watch the film that Kieran Knightley in so I thought I would buy the novel also obviously I have to have it for school so it was sort of a win-win situation with needing it for school and wanting to watch the film. People have told me this is a very frustrating book and I feel like if it doesn't live up to my expectations I'm going to be so frustrated at everyone who's told me that it's going to be frustrating. Um, so I'm very excited for this but I'm also kind of cautious and I'm going to probably procrastinate and put this off for a very long time because I don't want to read very frustrating novels at the moment. 
this is another ask doing this sense of sensibility i watched the film ages ago and i remember it being really good so i thought i would get the novel and it's quite it's a small version but they're often thicker um so yeah it's quite it's quite nice it's very handy these sized novels instead of like the bigger ones because they just fit in my bag so much easier um they're far more compact obviously and I'm very excited about this because I love Jane Austen as I've said and I am very much looking forward to it. And my final book of this haul is American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis. I have a lot of opinions on this book um, and I think this is summarised. You cannot have the um, message of the story without the violence and sometimes when you're reading it um, in some areas you get really bored and it desensitizes you from the violence and that is the purpose of this novel it is trying to put you in the sort of perspective of this psychopath it's a very 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 clever novel though sometimes it is boring especially if you're not if you're not a um, active reader if you're more of like a passive reader like sometimes I'd read this in my sixth form room and I would just not really be paying attention it's just so dull, you have to actively be questioning it all the time. Um, but it's a piece of literary genius, there's no denying that. Um, honestly, the reason I bought this was to understand why there's so many, like, boys who say the film's incredible, and I was like, I'm not gonna watch the film until I read the book, so I read the book. And it is a very intelligent novel, I cannot lie. But sometimes it's very boring because of the way it desensitizes violence. For the reader so yeah um i actually didn't get this in charity shop i got this from world of books uk which is my savior when i can't find things in charity shops um also i think there might be an age restriction on this my mom got this for me um i'm pretty sure if you go to like waterstones and stuff you have to be like 18 or under to buy it so just be cautious of that also again very heavy themed it's very dark i mean it's called american psycho so i feel like you would probably get that from the title if not check the trigger warnings before you read any books Okay, so I've put these into two piles, but that is all of my novels that I've bought in the past two months to entertain myself. It's it's a hefty pile when you think about both of them together, because then we have this other one. Oh, that's falling. It's a very, very hefty pile. I feel like that's all we have for today with my lovely book stacks. I'm gonna put this down. Do you feel like I could? Okay, okay, we're gonna get the whole pack. Oh god.